Um, we have an extra special demo coming up for you next. Um, we have a lot of people doing sketches uh, throughout the week. But Mr. Alex Sinclair is going to show us some coloring expertise on this beautiful... Um, do we get, can we get the... Yep. There we go. Look at this piece, everybody. Um, if you haven't seen this, uh, this is a Jim Lee that is going to be the cover of the Batman Hush Omnibus that is coming out. We good to go? Sure. All right. So um, we would do one of these every year, and, and I try and vary it up. Uh, most of the time, I bring all kinds of clunky equipment uh, and multiple pieces of equipment to color it, which is similar to what I use at home. But when I travel, I actually use the iPad to color, uh, an iPad Pro and, and the Apple Pencil. And um, uh, what's great about it is that it's, it's, it's easier to, to, to travel with. Uh, it weighs about one tenth of what the other the equipment does, and, and um, I still, whatever I do on the iPad, I still bring back to my computer to make sure that the color settings are correct, everything looks good, and then uh, send it off to the printer. Um, this cover came in from uh, from Jim and Scott, um, and um, it, it was I was tasked with coloring it, and and uh, sometimes when you have a simple cover like this, it's a little bit harder because you got to do a little, do more with less. Um, so part of my process is, is going through and, and flatting a page. And what that entails is, is really just selecting different elements within each cover and filling it with a flat color. And that's why it's called flatting. There's no rendering involved. Uh, it helps to separate all the different elements. Um, Was it a, a big adjustment for you moving to the iPad with the Apple Pencil? At, you know, the, the adjustment became learning a new program because I worked with Photoshop for more than 20 years, just kind of learning that new program and, and, and being proficient enough at it so that I was fast enough on it that I didn't want to go back to my computer all the time. Um, so it, it was more like anything else, just kind of sitting in front of it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And what is this uh, software you use on the iPad? I'm using uh, Procreate. Uh, and it's, it's probably the... I picked it because it's the one that's most like Photoshop uh, and it's got some great brush engines and I think that's to me having a program that has great brush engine is, is what you need for digital painting uh, so that's what attracted me to it um, we'll talk here uh, use a color picker grab a little bit of a light blue mess with the this is the opacity of the, of the brush and the size of the brush and then you'll see how big the brush is and then I'll go through and select everything within a cover like this and fill it with a flat color, um, which then allows me to go back and select it faster. So we're going to kind of skip a step here and go straight to the flat. Okay, so this is what it looks like at the flat stage. There's no rendering, and, and, and Jim and Scott did such an amazing job on the rendering as is that I, you know, it could, I could just as easily turn it in and it looked great. Um, so my approach to this was very subtle. I really wanted to go very subtle. Uh, simple, not too much rendering, um, and I literally just went from here and just started painting in broad strokes as opposed to into very detailed work. So I took a, a gigantic brush, knocked down the opacity, and then just really started to just Now I'm sure everybody here is aware, but being uh, Alex is part of one of the top creative teams in all of media, in my opinion, uh, between Jim Lee, Scott Williams, and Alex. Uh, they put out some of the most beautiful pieces, most beautiful color covers, most beautiful books that we have. Um, talk a little bit about the relationship between uh, the penciler, the inker, and the colorist. It's probably my favorite, what I like the most about working in comics. It's a collaborative medium. So you get to work with one or two artists all the time. Uh, and you feed off each other, you draw inspiration from each other. Um, it's great working with someone like Jim and Scott and is that as they're doing their part of it, they're anticipating what the next, the, what the next artist is going to do. So it's kind of cool because they, they, they set it up so that uh, it's a successful piece because we're all kind of counting on each other and relying on each other. And you uh, trust and each other together. and yeah. you know that yes. um, you can almost, uh, there's got to be sort of like a sixth sense or yeah. uh, so there's uh, a mind almost, yeah, between you guys. An unspoken kind of dialogue when we're doing things uh, 
Yeah, that's one of the questions I get all the time. Do you get a lot of input when you do you color something? Where I want to see this. I want to see that. And I actually probably get um, every now and then I'll 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 get uh, a note, but it's really something uh, specific that they, they want to call out or that they did that's different from from the norm. Mm. Um, and then if it's something that looks really different, I'll probably raise my hand. It's like, hey, I was thinking of doing this. Just want to make sure that. You know, before I go down that route, that w this is kind of what you were looking for, what you were thinking when, when we started this piece. All right. So I'm going to continue adding. Uh, right now, I'm just adding a little bit of a blue wash to the shadow side of of, of the piece. Um, it's it's a very it's it's the rendering is really cool in that it's it's not just a a horizontally split image, but it, it's also there's a diagonal that goes from 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 upper right to bottom left too. So I'm actually painting my strokes in that direction um, to play up that a little bit more. I'm going to add a, a, a new layer here. I'm going to change the, the mode of the layer to a screen layer. That's going to allow me to, to kind of paint a highlight in. And what this will do is it will bleach that color in a little bit. And I'm going to go a little bit smaller here. All right, we'll see. How they go? So I'm coming in with a warm light here. So I'm, I'm going to play with the, the warm versus cool light. And you're starting to see a little bit of the separation already just by, by doing some of that. Um, all right, and then I'll start going in and, and adding some detail work. So I'll go back to that flat layer that I, that I spoke about, and I'll just select. What did I do? So I'll select what I'm going to work on next. So now what I've done is I've selected the eyes. And so no matter what I do or paint, um, and I can show you by going back to the layer, no matter what I do outside here, as my cursor, if you're, I'm doing, uh, I'm painting outside that eyeball only when I go through where I select it will it affect it. All right, so we're going to go we're going to go into the the hush side of this. Now for me, uh final colors can add so much emotion uh in overall environment and ambiance to a piece. Do you find um your your personal emotions uh have input on to what you're coloring that day, or is it sort of all based uh, on the piece itself and what you're trying to bring to it? I, most of it is the piece, the art, the, uh, if I'm doing uh, interiors, it's the script that's gonna dictate some of what's going on. Uh, but really, I feed off of what the artists have done ahead of me. Um, I think cover work definitely gets influenced by how I'm feeling that day or, or um, what I've just done. So I've, if I just finished a cover that had a lot of yellows and oranges in it, I'm probably going to completely shy away from those colors for that next cover just for the sake of uh, if that those books are coming out in around the same month, I don't want there to be five yellow covers. Because sure. um, then now you're going to start to choose one of the five as right, opposed right. to if you have a various some variety, you'll pick more than one. Yep. All right, so we'll continue. I'm going to go slide over here. And I use that blue light for that side, and I'm going to switch over, go to a warm light. I mean, and it must be great. Like, looking at uh, the details of this piece up close. Uh, oh, it's insane. Do you, ever, do you still find yourself in, in awe of uh, Jim and Scott's work once yes. you get it? My favorite part is getting the artboard and, like, looking at it. And I can look at it, and then I can scan it, and I can zoom in and see you know, how crazy some of the work is and how intricate what Scott and Jim are doing. Uh, especially in this piece where Jim really drew this in pencil only uh, and then they decided to, to make it into an inked and colored piece where Scott really had to work hard to interpret a lot of that shading that, that Jim had done in, um, in pencil. All right, uh, we'll move ahead here. Let's go play a little bit with some of the uh, the bandages and again like I've mentioned before I'm really working in broad strokes 
Uh, I'm going to come in with a little more of a textured brush now. Do you have any like favorites or go-to brushes sort of uh, within the toolkit? Yes. Any, uh, any surprises? You're like, oh, this one's like a thumbprint brush, and you wouldn't <laughs> think to use that, but yeah. So there's there's brushes where I've created. I created a watercolor brush that looked great as a uh, asphalt texture. Interesting. So all of a sudden, that became my asphalt texture, um, and, and certain certain things like that. Where I uh, I did a water ripple brush when we were working on All Star Batman and Robin mm. that looked like lace. So it was fun to start to use that for, for those kind of textures as well. All right, so here we go. And you'll find the, sometimes when I work, I'll, I'll do really general strokes to indicate the highlights. Pull out make sure that everything that needs to pop is popping correctly. And then come back in and add a little bit more detail if needed. Yeah, playing with the lighting and the highlights. Are there any sort of like real world um, objects or environments that uh, you, you study or have sort of, uh, you know, historically uh, used as reference? Um, a lot. I mean, a lot of, of uh, as an artist, you're told, draw what you see. So uh, it, it's walking around and you happen to see this cool reflection on a car. Mm -hmm. You're kind of almost like, well, nowadays you just take your picture sure. with your phone and you take that and that becomes that, hey, next time I, I do a car, I'm going to use that. Um, uh, I, I, I joke that I get caught sometimes uh, staring at people because they're wearing glasses and there's a really cool light reflection in their eyes and I'm staring at it and the person catches me staring <laughs> at it and I go, sorry, just actually watching the light bounce off your glasses there. Um, so it, it is a, a lot of, of just kind of drawing what you see and... and, and and borrowing from life. Um, inspiration is why sometimes when I'm, I'm stuck, I'll go back and, 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 and look through art from different periods. Impressionism is one of the ones that I like the most. Cool. Uh, and, and then some high renaissance stuff as well, but I, I really like kind of going back. Impressionist use color really boldly mm. um, uh, and, and almost exclusively without the use of black. So I, I kind of tend to to fall back to that a lot. All right, so. Uh, remind us of the software you're using on the iPad. Procreate is the software I use on the iPad. I use Photoshop on my Mac at home. So I work at home, I have a, it's an iMac with a Cintiq tablet and Photoshop. Uh, a question I get all the time is how long does it take to do a piece? Um, and it really depends on, depends on the piece itself. So something like this where it's just a gigantic head actually takes a lot less than, than going through a cover with, say, four or five characters. So that'll influence. The artist will definitely uh, play as well, where some art is a lot more simpler than others. Um, so doing a gym cover versus doing, say, a cover by like Steve Root, it's two different approaches to different styles. So one's a little more intricate, more involved in with the very realistic rendering that they put into it. I have to go in and be as realistic with, with what I do as well. So whereas if it's stylized, I can change my, st my approach and be a little more stylized as well. All right, so let's go back. Let's, uh, let's play with the highlights on the, over here. In the superhero world, I mean, we do have a lot of characters with very colorful costumes and uh, villains as well. Um, are there any characters that uh, you get in a piece where you're immediately excited about uh, um, getting a little out there or getting a little more bold? What's funny is, is I always love Batman, um, even though he's really, especially lately, there's no real color 
to his suit, but uh, the challenge becomes how do you make someone like that either blend in or pop from, from his, his surroundings. So um, uh, I think what I like about Batman is, is the stuff that goes around him. So if he's in Gotham City, Gotham City becomes a character too. Sure. So you yeah. kind of play that up, uh, the, that, that relationship between him and the city or him and that character or him and what's going on around him, especially when he comes in contact with Superman. It's the, this kind of the, 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 the two just diff so different, yeah. but you got to make it so that it works so that Superman the doesn't pop so much, right, yeah. that, that you lose out on Batman. So, the, you know, the, I think I like him because he's, he's, even though he's got the easiest costume to color, it's probably the hardest one to pull off. Sure. But I do love stuff. I like, I've worked on a Hawkman. I love Hawkman. Mm -hmm. The feathers, the, the work that Brian Hitch is doing on that. It's been cool, and, and his helmet's always something yeah. fun to, to work on. You got that nice shine on the helmet. Yeah. And, yep. Uh, All right. We're going to continue. We're going to try and try and get through as much of this as possible for you. Um, we have about, what, 20 minutes total? <laughs> And that weird color you see is it's it's showing me what I'm selecting, so I know visually uh, what I'm changing or what I need to change. So I'm going to change the highlight a little bit to more of an orange for the flesh tone. Otherwise, it's going to look too pale, too bleached out. And instead of the texture that I see here, I'm going to go a little more smooth since it's skin. So we're going to go back to this soft airbrush. you'll see me zoom in and out a lot and that's um, with your work you want to make sure that that you don't get so engrossed in tiny little details especially in, in a comic book when you're working at almost t twice the size uh, you're noodling five little figures that when they when they they shrink and get printed you're gonna lose all that detail or a word balloons gonna <laughs> pop right on top of them so you learn to kind of economize uh, as you move through a page to make sure that you don't overdo it too much so I'm coming now in with a little bit of a harder brush. Drop the opacity and then start to create some. A little bit of a beveling effect. Um, it's kind of the style of, of coloring that we used to do. Um, when we first started off, we created these bands of color to create shapes that made it look realistic. Are you someone who uh, knows when it's done, or do you will you keep tinkering and keep adding a, a little another stroke here, another stroke there? Yeah, you definitely need to know when to stop. <laughs> that's definitely something that um, that you want to. Um, like I said, sometimes you over render, you over render, you over render, sure. um, and so you definitely need to learn when to stop. All right, here we go. Go back to that golden color. Great. Well, um, let's. Uh, we can put some finishing touches uh, on this. It is gorgeous as always, Alex. Um, everybody, let's give a big round of applause for Alex Sinclair. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your convention.